This guy on Reddit says, is the Ender 3 V3 as bad as people are saying? And the very first reply is, nah, people are just always mad at Creality and the Ender. I think that's really true. And just for the record, I think that the Ender 3 V3, and by extension, this Ender 3 V3 Plus is one of the best printers from Creality ever. But in keeping with the Ender lineup and its history, it's got a design choice that nearly ruined it for me. Creality's Ender line has been part of the 3D printing world since 2014, when 3D printing enthusiasts were largely tinkerers and builders and upgrading their printers by hand. For many people, the Ender was one of the very first printers, but like other printers of the era, it could be so, so frustrating to use. People have made countless modifications to their Enders, with people making tweaks and changing settings and changing parts in the quest to make the perfect printer. So we fast forward to 2024, and here is the newest Ender, the Ender 3 V3. Plus, I really was not expecting it to be one of the most reliable printers in my studio. And I have like 12 printers in my studio right now, but it is a rock solid printer. During my testing, this printer has had almost no printing problems. Like my 3D printing forefathers, I hacked this machine, which is why I've got this crazy bit of stuff going on up here. So here's what I'm going to do. Let me go over this printer, starting with what's new and then jumping into the big problem that I had with it and how to fix it so that you too can get the large print area that you want with the best features Creality has ever offered in the Ender line and without the problem that drives me insane. Quick disclosure, there's a lot of great stuff going on here. So let's go over why this feels like a breakthrough in plus size printing to me. The Ender 3 V3 Plus has a 300 by 300 by 330 millimeter build volume. It has a claim speed of 600 millimeters per second, which is really fast. Creality says that this has two high torque motors that work together for faster movement. It's got things like automatic belt tensioning, so no more slipping print heads or axis shifts. The body of this thing is aerospace grade aluminum and the gantry and the body are two solid pieces of aluminum that are connected instead of having these corners welded together. It makes the whole gantry stronger. It's also got these rails on the gantry, at least on the plus model, which keeps it from wobbling during printer. printing. The extruder here, which I'll talk about more in a bit, is a direct drive and it normally has a small bit of PTFE tubing coming out of it. But again, more of that in a second. The extruder also has this really smart locking system up here. You slide the filament in with the lock open, and then once it's in there, you snap it into place to make sure that the filament won't slip. I've come to really like this design. The motor also makes this adorable like chipmunk noise when it's printing. It's like having maybe R2-D2 as a 3D printer. The hot end goes from ambient temperature to 300 degrees in about 75 seconds. The nozzle is copper with a titanium heat break and a hardened steel tip. Unlike most printers, the hot end can be removed one-handed without needing to clamp down on the heat break. So when you want to replace the print head, you just use this tool. This tool goes onto the print head and you can turn it without having to clamp onto something up here. Let me put this down. The print head also has dual part cooling fans, one on the front and one on the back. The Ender 3 V3 and the Ender 3 V3 Plus has auto calibration and input shaping. There's no need to do z-axis adjustments or level the bed. If you have ever laid paper tape on an Ender bed to get it level, well, throw that tape away. In fact, throw that printer away. The LCD screen on this printer is really one of the best that I've seen so far. It's bright, it's easy to see, the touch screen doesn't require like mashing your finger on it to register a button press. If you use Creality Cloud, your previous print jobs are accessible both from the screen of the machine and also from the app. And one of my very favorite things about this printer is the ability to manage a farm full of them with the Creality Print or Creality Cloud apps. So you can connect LAN only if you want the most security, or you can connect with the cloud to monitor your prints and send them at once to printers anywhere. The Ender 3 V3 Plus profile is also now in the newest version of Orca, so you can slice there and then use the app or the web browser interface to print and monitor the jobs. This brings us to the very weird design choice that I haven't seen on any other printer, which nearly made me hit this with a hammer. But first, if you have a second, hit that subscribe button below. If long-term commitments aren't your thing, just give me a like. Oh yeah, and let me know in the comments if the word like and subscribe just got all cool colors around them when I said that. It happens on some videos I watch, but not on others. Okay, either way, push the buttons and now we're best friends. The Ender 3 V3 Plus has a side-loading filament spool, which is what would go on these two bolts here. I just hate side-loading print spools to begin with. But if you advertise the printer as being good for a print farm, a place where you got to emit spaces at a premium, putting the spool on the side seems like a weird choice to me. So just use the top spool holder, right? Well, there isn't one, but there is a file on the printer for one of these top spool holders like the one I have up here. But you can't really use it without the changes that I made. Okay, so this is why I've got this Frankenstein wiring going on up here, which normally is taped down, but I left it off so you can see it. I'll eventually make a better modification for this, but I wanted you to see the work in progress. 
and that, I guess. All right, so let me move this helmet off of here. So out of the box, not only is the spool holder here on the side, but the filament runout sensor goes right here on the Z-axis arm. So that means that as the print head moves up, the filament from the side gets pulled up with it. And then as the print head moves down, the filament gets unwound back into the spool. When the filament comes back to the spool, it gets tangled around the spool because the spool has no way to take up that slack. If you use the top mounted spool holder, you can't use the runout sensor because the runout sensor is here on the arm. And so you'd have to take the filament, run the filament down below the runout sensor, or bring it back up and use a tube to go all the way to the print head, which really is not a thing you should do. Crayaldi says that if you want to use the top mounted spool holder, you have to either unplug the runout sensor or stick some filament in it so it thinks that it's always printing and not empty. So first what I did here was unscrew the runout sensor, which is only held on by two screws, so that's not a problem. Then I printed out this top mounted spool holder, which again is a file that's already in the printer's memory. Then the next problem is that I wanted to put the sensor up here on the filament spool holder, but the cable isn't long enough. And these cables aren't like USB cables or anything like that. You can't just find these laying around your house. They're designed for motherboards. They're not designed to be extended. They're supposed to run from the motherboard to something, not from the motherboard to a cable, to a cable, to a cable. But they're available on Amazon. Link below in the description. The cables look like this. They come in a bag with a ton of them, and you can simply daisy chain one of them into the other one. So I printed this little holder for the runout sensor up here, and I glued that for now to the top filament sensor. Bada bing, bada boom, Bob's your uncle and you're printing. Link to the STL file down in the description as well. Then I just removed all of the Teflon tubing so my filament runs directly from the spool to the extruder without any friction. The filament holder here moves back and forth while the printer prints, but next I'm going to make a holder for the arm that rotates like the one on the Neptune series and other printers so that the runout sensor can move back and forth with the print head. Now I've got a tweaked ender that works exactly how I want it to. But I think it shows how the ender line has really moved into this new era of printing, but it's still a printer that can be modified and improved upon. So let's hear it in the comments. Do you love enders? Do you hate them? Don't care either way at all. And if you're a long time user of an ender, what's it been like for you? And what do you think about this leap that these ender printers have made over the one that you are using? NASA called. They wanted to talk to you about your dream of becoming an astronaut and your application for the program. But first, they asked if you could like and subscribe, which you can do below or around here somewhere. So for Dave Tries This, I'm David Schloss. And as always, thanks so much for giving this a try. Can I stop smiling now?